Hey, remember this video? On that note, get subscribed. I have a video planned about how you can get a better airflow with a simple 3D print. Probably not, since at the time of writing I have like 350 subs, but anyway. I've always wondered if there was a way to make my old case have better airflow. This trend of mesh and generally well-ventilated cases started after I originally built mine in 2018, and I never really had the need to get a well-ventilated case. But now that I have a Ryzen 7 5800X 3D and an RTX 3090, I need all the airflow I can get. That's when I randomly stumbled upon this thing on Thingiverse. He promised me that he would drop case components and temps with a simple mod, and I just knew I had to give it a try. Okay, I finished printing them, so let's uh, disassemble them. Let me just... I think they're okay, oh my god, let me check. Okay, everything is in order, uh, it's almost perfect, I mean the body is perfect basically, but the plug itself has these really strange things here, I think it's my printer's fault, but anyway, I think they look pretty good, I use this strange filament, so yeah, let's now plug them in. For the benchmarks, I used a mixture of Blender Classroom and Unigine Square Position to have a very heavy but realistic and constant workload. I also have to specify that I have 5 P12, PWM, PSD, ABGF fans from Arctic, 3 on the front and 3 on the back. From the first test with the panel on, I got a maximum of 90 degrees Celsius for the CPU, which I got in just 6 minutes after starting the test, which is also the maximum operating temperature you can get, so not a great start. The temperatures on the GPU instead were great, oscillating between 75 and 78, with a maximum of 69 degrees. Nice. Now let's remove the front panel, mount the spacers and redo the tests. Turns out they actually help a lot for how simple they are. The CPU only settled around 85 degrees Celsius maximum, which is 5 degrees lower than uh, with the front panel on, and most importantly not hitting the temperature limit, but also warmed up a bit slower, reaching a stable temperature around 9 minutes in after starting the test. The GPU saw also some little improvements, dropping around 4 degrees Celsius and oscillating between 64 and 65 degrees. Actually, now that I think about it, even if the CPU frequencies were only slightly lower than normal in the stock test, we are talking maximum 100 megahertz less, got me worried that I was leaving some performance on the table, so I did another shorter test with the same setup just to check this hypothesis. Thankfully it was within margin of error, a loss of less than 1% of rendering time, so that's good at least. So one question comes natural, why just not remove the whole front panel, leaving just the bare dust filter instead? Wouldn't that decrease the temperature even more? And yeah, that's a good idea, let's test that too. Turns out, while it changed less than 1 degree on the GPU, it really helped a lot on the CPU. It cleared the 30 minutes test, maintaining around 78 degrees Celsius, but eventually, right before the test, settled around 84 degrees too. I'm not too sure why it had this behavior, but I tested this twice and did the same thing. It is what it is. Anyway, I don't think I'll be leaving it like this for two simple reasons. First of all, it looks really ugly, but also all the tasks that get caught by the filter will be visible and nasty. With the 3D prints you can easily modify them to be a little bit shorter or longer to preference, I think I'll stick with them. So yeah, this was a very short video, but I really just wanted to see if these things worked or not. They're actually very helpful, they have been living on my computer case for about a month now. If you're interested, I'll leave the link to the 3D print in the description. Don't forget to like, subscribe and leave me a comment if you want, and I'll see you again in the next one.